Hello, welcome to part 3 of this series. Now let's move to post number 41. Short burst of strenuous activity to build muscle and strength is Option A. Plyometrics Option B. Anaerobic exercise Option C. Aerobic exercise Option D. Flexibility And the answer is Option B. Anaerobic exercise Now let's move to question number 42 Which is the close back position in the shoulder joint? Option A. Flexion and internal rotation Option B. Abduction and horizontal abduction Option C. Abduction and internal rotation Option D. Abduction and external rotation and the answer is Option C Abduction and internal rotation Now let's move to question number 43 Manual techniques for postural drainage are Option A Precursion, Vibration and Shaking Option B Precursion, Hacking and Bonding Option C Precursion, Cupping, Hacking Option D None of the above And the answer is Option C. Percussion, Cupping, Hacking Now let's move to question number 44. According to Frengel's exercise, essential to learn any new exercises are Option A. Concentration, Isolation and Relaxation Option B. Concentration, Isolation, Repetition Option C. Concentration, Precision, Repetition Option D. None of the above And the answer is Option C. Concentration, Precision and Repetition Now let's move to question number 45. The following criteria must be met to progress to final phase of rehabilitation after total knee arthroplasty except Option A. E, no extension lag Option B. At least 50% of the muscle strength in the knee and the hip muscles Option C. Minimal pain Option D. Ambulation with care And answer is Option B, at least 50% of the muscle strength in the knee joint and hip muscles. Now let's move to question number 46. In case of below knee amputee, transtibial amputation, the following are the pressure tolerant areas except Option A, patellar tendon. Option B, medial tibial flare. Option C, fibular head. Option D, popliteal fossa. And the answer is Option D, popliteal fossa. Now let's move to question number 47. Which of the following is a amputation of the trans metatarsal level? Option A. Sims. Option B. Lispranks. Option C. Chopards. Option D. Biotes. And the answer is Option B. Lispranks. Now let's move to question number 48. Burn of which of the following part of the body are considered as major burns? Option A. Face Option B. Hand Option C. Perineum Option D. Both 1 and 3 And the answer is Option D. Both 1 and 3 Now let's move to question number 49 Which of the following statements regarding constraint-induced movement therapy is true? Option E. It requires constraint of the affected limb Option B. It is based on the principle of repeated practice and intense the activity. Option C. It utilizes a passive non-intensive approach. Option D. It aims to improve the use of unaffected extremity. And the answer is Option B. It is based on the principle of repeated practice and intense activity. Now let's move to question number 50. If a patient present with a burn with damage to epidermis but only partial damage of the dermis and has blistering, how is the burn classified as? Option A. First degree or superficial. Option B. Second degree or partial thickness. Option C. Third degree or full thickness. Option D. Unstaggable. And the answer is Option B. Second degree or partial thickness. Now let's move to question number 51. The V, F or M functional assessment in pediatric population may be measured by beginning of which age? Option A, birth. Option B, 6 month. Option C, 12 month. Option D, 24 months. And answer is Option B, 6 months. Now let's move to question number 52. 
What axion states that high intensity low repetition exercise builds strength and low intensity high repetitive exercise build endurance? Option A Mirinda axion, Option B Ariel's axion, Option C Dilrong's axion, Option D Fiat's axion, and the answer is Option C Dilrong's axion. Now let's move to question number 53. In a patient with spinal cord injury, intermittent clean catheterization should be considered in which of the following? Option A, small bladder capacity. Option B, cognitive impairment. Option D, adequate hand function. Option D, prone to automatic dysreflexia. And the answer is Option A, small bladder. Now let's move to question number 54. Fatigue in a patient with multiple sclerosis will increase weight. Option A, heating. Option B, cooling. Option C, wetness. Option D, dryness. And the answer is... Option A, heating. Now let's move to question number 55. The technique that uses ultrasound to deliver medication through the skin is... Option A, diatomy. Option B, iodophoresis. Option C, differential therapy. Option D, phonophoresis. And the answer is Option D, phonophoresis. Now let's move to question number 56. The examiner reviews the result of pulmonary function test for a 58 year old male patient. He notes that the patient's total lung capacity is significantly increased when compared to the established norms. Which medical condition would most likely produce this type of results? Option A, chronic bronchitis. Option B, emphysema. Option C, spinal cord injury. Option D, pulmonary fibrosis. And the answer is Option B, emphysema. Now let's move to question number 57. The examiner observes the patient's breathing as a part of respiratory assessment. Which muscle of the respiration is most active during forced expedition? Option A, diaphragm. Option B, external intercostal. Option C, internal intercostal. Option D, upper trapezius. And the answer is Option C, internal intercostal. Now let's move to question number 58. While examining a 64 year old male patient with chronic bronchitis, the physician finds that his respiratory rate is 30 breaths per minute. Which breathing technique would most appropriate to decrease the patient's respiratory rate? Option A. Glossopharyngeal breathing. Option B. Diaphragmatic breathing. Option C. Segmental breathing. Option D. Pearl slip breathing. And the answer is... Option D. Pearl slip breathing. Now let's move to question number 59. Which of the following is not an absolute contraindication for cardiac rehabilitation? Option A. Hypertrophic cardiomegaly. Option B. Acute pericarditis. Option C. Resting systolic blood pressure greater than 200 mmHg. Option D. Third degree heart block without pacemaker. And the answer is... Option A. Hypertrophic cardiomegaly. Now let's move to question number 60. Cardiac output is defined as a product of which of the following components? Option A. Heart rate and stroke volume. Option B. Stroke volume and oxygen consumption. Option C. Ejection fraction and aerobic capacity. Option D. Myocardial oxygen capacity and heart rate. And the answer is... Option A. Heart rate and stroke volume. So that's all for today in this part 3. If you need any clarification for any of the questions above, do comment in the comment box. I'll be back with part 4 of this series. See you then. Bye bye.